Hello, hello. What's up? What up, dude? How you doing? Pretty good. How about you? Do it. Doing great. Doing fantastic. Ready to do some coaching. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm a bit nervous. Never been coached before. No worries, dude. It's uh, it, it'll be easy, smooth. Uh, all you gotta do. This is the tip, okay? That I'll give you. If you ever have a question, and you don't want to forget it. Just ask it right away, because uh, I do not mind if you interrupt me at all. So, I want you to like walk away from this, getting as many questions as you have answered. So, feel free to ask whatever you want, whenever you want. And, uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll jump into a replay here in just a minute, I guess, to get it started. So, okay, sounds good. with that being said, Give me a quick rundown of yourself as to what league you're currently in and what matchup you kind of want to focus on uh, and kind of j just a general idea of how you like to play, like what kind of units you usually like to use. Gotcha. So I'm in Diamond League right now, Diamond League 1, and I'm, I really just scout and I try to counter what I see at first and then I go from there I don't really use a build order sure but I never thought that I was good enough to pull one off okay and then um, I, I kind of suck at spread and creep and I love I mean I love Zerg All right. Well, with, with honestly, with that being said, um, that's already something that I can see that will help you a lot. Is if I we kind of like break down your kind of like your desired playstyle, and then we give you more of like an efficient type of build to work with it. That already will help you so much if gotcha. if your games are like you know like one game you're doing well, one game you're doing you're not doing so well, and you're like, okay, I don't really understand why that didn't really work that well, and may, maybe. One of your builds just kind of happened to fall in the realm of efficiency, and one of your builds just happened to not, because they might not be the same thing. Right. So that, that'll be I definitely... Have, or, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, you're good. I, I cut you off. But um, I was... Uh, when I was playing yesterday, I actually grabbed a couple... Um, saved a couple replays. Two I won, and then one I lost. The one that I lost, it was to a... Terran that had battle cruisers. Okay. And I tried to counter, but I wasn't a fast enough. So, and I've always had trouble. My main thing is cannon rushers on a. Uh, uh, I can't even remember the race right now. Protoss. They aggravate me to no end. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, sounds like a. Like a standard problem to have. <laughs> like a lot of people like <laughs> Um Alright, so I guess we can just jump into the first one you want to go into. Um, are right now, are you on the uh, North American server on Battle.net? Yes. Okay, so all you got to do is in top right, left click your little avatar portrait. It'll open up your profile. And then uh, in the middle left, hit the button ladders. And then in the same spot, hit Grandmaster. Scroll the list down to rank 94, and then you can just right-click my name and send me a message, and we can get a party gotcha. started. I think it hit the right person. Yeah. <clears throat> and then you need me to invite you to the party, I'm assuming? Yeah, or just send me a message either way. There you go, perfect. There we go. Alright, and then uh, just in replays, go to the one you want to go to and then hit watch with others. Gotcha. Where is There we go. So this is one that I ended up winning. Sure. But um, I actually tied it, titled it Need a Better Resource Management. Okay. Because I feel like by the end of the game, I had way too many resources when I could have spent them way more efficiently. Sure. Makes sense. Uh, go ahead and right-click my name and uh, promote to lobby host, and then we'll be good to go. And and yeah, that definitely is always a problem. Like, that is 
one of the most consistent problems that you'll always have to teach people is uh, resource management. Uh, just making enough money and then spending it well enough. So <laughs> that's right. It's a very common problem to have. <laughs> then I feel like in some games, I either expand too fast or I expand too slow. I can never find that good medium. Okay. Um, that's well. That comes and with I, build order, right? Right. Yeah. So we'll. I mean, that that's definitely going to be something that'll help you out a lot. Like, it doesn't even have to be a super elaborate build order. It could just be something that, uh, um, you know, you eventually do. Like right here, I'll just I'll say throw this out there right now. Uh, if the game starts, and y y you prioritize. Typing. Good luck. Have fun. <laughs> Before macroing, you're fucking yourself over pretty bad. Because <laughs> uh, what just okay. happened? What just happened is is your drones have been started for two seconds, but p both larvae, like you waited long enough to where you could start two drones at the same time, and this is a huge yeah. deal for you because uh, your larva caps out at three, and you start with three. So the second the game starts, the number one priority should be immediately starting a larva. Uh, because now your larva is always, for the whole game, going to be 8 seconds behind. Like, and, th and that's assuming you don't make a single mistake the rest of the game. But it's already gotcha. 8 seconds behind. It's it's pretty huge. Um, and then uh, the Overlord as well. Like, I would say this is the priority, okay? This is like, until you're like really comfortable, there's one way to do it. And then once you get really comfortable with it, there's a second way to do it that's a little bit better. The first way to do it before you're really comfortable is to, as soon as the game starts, you just make that drone immediately. Like the sec like you have your mouse. You can see your mouse on the loading screen. Put it in the center of the screen, in the loading screen. So the second the game starts, uh -huh. you can literally just click SD. So you just get that shit as quick as you can. And then when you're not super comfortable with everything yet, after you do this, immediately just move your overlord to your opponent's base, and then you're done. That's it. So SD, gotcha. like click after SD, move overlord, we're good to go. If you get really comfortable though, then you're just like, wow, this is, I'm like doing this super fast every single time. Mm -hmm. what, you, what you can do then is you'll always, once again, put your mouse in the middle of the screen, click SD as soon as the game starts. It's like a reaction test. And then immediately, but while the drones are saturating the mineral line, you grab the bottom couple, like one or two. You send them to the bottom, far, the furthest bottom patch, and then you can grab the top side of your, your drones that are going to the initial mineral line. The top one or two, send them to the top patch. So you do like a split. And then you send your overlord once you get really comfortable. Gotcha. That's not required, but that's that is uh, like slightly more efficient than not doing it. So it's it's worth practicing once you get really really comfortable with everything. And it's also another skill you can practice, which is always fun uh, to do. Nice. Okay. But yeah, uh, this definitely you have like the larva. That's the biggest thing though. You have to spend that shit within the first like one. If it's not spent within the first two seconds, it's very detrimental to your build overall. Okay. Oh shit, dude, you canceled one. <laughs> oh no. I, I didn't even realize that, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, uh, when it said canceled, I was like, uh. <laughs> and then, uh, when, uh, if you ever do that, like, I would say if you ever make a mistake and you're like, fuck. All right, well, uh, I didn't mean to make what I did, and it's in, it's in the egg now. It's kind of just there. Just let it happen, literally. Because if you cancel it, you don't get the larva back. So it's the same thing as it is just sacrificing a larva. So now, that is like... An, each time a larva gets canceled, that's like just 10 seconds, just deleted. So that's now... If you started off with 8 seconds behind because you couldn't generate a larva and you just canceled one, it's like 18 seconds behind now. Which is... That's oh, huge. Yeah. Best thing you can do... Uh, would have been the best thing you could have done there to fix if you ever join up to 14 out of 14 best thing you could do is uh, Just let the larva sit Make your overlord once you once you kind of how you made it now Just make it now and then once your next larva is ready to go and your overlords not spawned yet You could just take one of your drones off your middle line build a gas Start that next larva and do a drone and then cancel the gas so you do a gas okay. trick It looks like you're kind of doing it now, anyways. Uh, oh god, dude! If you let these gases finish, this is gonna be crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Okay, are you are you doing? Okay, so this game, just to give me a quick disclaimer, are you doing a like a roach all in here? 
No. Okay, so this 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 is one of those things where I, where if we talk about your build, this mm -hmm. build, like if, I'm gonna just throw this out there, dude. If you're diamond and the sometimes this is how it's going, you have so much untapped potential because this build is so fucking inefficient. Like yep. if, <laughs> if we just get you some builds, you're gonna be like so much better off. <laughs> <sighs> Because I'm gonna throw this out there, okay? Uh, this is a co this is a concept that I want you to really uh, uh, just embrace and understand. And it is every single drone on your mineral line, okay? Each each drone individually represents about six point two five. We'll say roughly about six percent, okay? I'll just I will estimate it. Roughly about six percent of your economy, each drone. So right now you're missing. If, we're t if it really is like 6.25, you're missing about like 38% of your economy right now. Or like 37.5% of your economy on this mirror line right now. And that's due to the fact that you have one drone scouting. You're not overlord scouting at all. You could The overlord could do that. So that's that's one of them right there. And you have, you've missed larva as well. And you have four drones. Two have built the gases and two are mining the gases. Not mining the mineral line. So essentially what I'm trying to say here is is your mineral line right now could be fully saturated. And if we look at your opponent, he basically is about to be fully saturated. So this is kind of oh, painful gotcha. for you. Uh, like it's, this is one of those things that's just going to indirectly make you fall really far behind. And now if you look at like okay. the supply, you're behind by four supply as well. And this is, nothing yeah. has really happened yet. So I'm already at a disadvantage before it even yep. starts it either. Yep. And now a couple of drones are chasing the probe. And like, if we t if we talk about like Overlord movement, this mm -hmm. would Overlord movement would make you feel like okay, yeah, we're not getting cannon rush. Things are okay. okay. Um. So, in general, like, we're gonna we're we're gonna still go through this replay, but I'm probably gonna start going through it a little bit faster, only because, uh, this build is like builds like this for you. How it's kind of going is never gonna net you really much progress from where you're currently at it's gonna probably just be it's gonna be more way more difficult than it has to be to progress okay. uh and i'll give you a build and after this game too about what i think is uh something that would be solid for you to work with okay but yeah missing overlords like how often would you say you overlord scout in the uh, average game um i usually do it more often than not Okay. This is just one of those. When I usually when I play against a, a a Protoss, for some reason I have the tendency to drone scout. Okay. Um. I guess because it's quicker, and then I can figure out if I'm getting cannon rush or not. I guess. Sure. Um. <clears throat> so. I'll definitely want to make you break the habit of dr like. If you really, really wanted to drone scout, I'm not going to stop you. I would say it would be okay to do it, uh, you know, if you're if you're really attached to that scouting uh, that scouting style. That's it's fine, but I would highly recommend getting used to Overlord scouting because if you actually do Overlord scout, all you have to do is your very first Overlord. The way where you you always click it here every map, uh, pretty much, is you can click your Overlord in the middle or the top of his ramp at his base. So like the ramp that goes from his main down to into his natural. Gotcha. Yeah, so middle or top. And then that will always scout not only did he expand, if what is at the front of his natural and also what is on his ramp if instead he's walling the ramp. Protosses usually will wall the front of the natural, but Terrans will wall the ramp uh, instead. Stuff like that. Um, and then your second overlord can just sit on top of or a little bit in front of your nat your natural. So you could, you oh, could right. then see like oh, okay he's cannon rushing me or he's not cannon rushing me stuff like that. Alrighty. And that would again that would just save you the economy so much because like right now, you've actually uh, I would just throw it out there and say so far this game if I had to guesstimate, we're only three minutes in, and keep in mind a larva spawns once every ten seconds. Mm. So that's that's how you get that the the range of how much larva we're missing here. And then also a queen that spawns three larvae every 30 seconds. So if you break it down, it's pretty much... Now, if you inc include automated larvae spawning and then queen injecting, you're basically getting two larvae every 10 seconds. Okay. And right now, with the fact that you skipped the queen and you've kind of 
and directly miss a lot of your larva, I would say this game already, you're already down by like 12 larva. Okay. Which is, it's huge. Uh, larva is your primary resource. Like, it's not, like, a lot of people go minerals and gas and supply. Those are your resources in StarCraft. But you also have, for Zerg, you have larva. That's a, that's a, the biggest resource of all. That is like the, the primary. And there's so much missed larva here with this build. All right, so we're going to speed it up a little bit now. And, uh, yeah, uh, do you, would you say uh, you skip queens often? Unfortunately, yes. Okay. I've been trying to get better at that. Sure. But I don't exactly know when to throw them in there, you know? Uh, right like away. I said, I've never really followed a build order or anything yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. So. We're, I'm, dude, I, I'm going to just... We're gonna we're, uh, honestly. I think the best thing we can do for you, seriously. Like the more I see of this game, the more I just see like this game ha is like, it's making it way harder for you to play properly and efficiently, because there's just the the core elements of Zerg are just being kind of skipped. Mm. Um, yeah, your build looks nuts. <laughs> <It's crazy. laughs> uh, all right. So, I mean, uh. We're going to see, like, again, at this point, the game is way harder than it has to be. Uh, we'll see kind of what develops here from this point. But, yeah, like, it's just... One of the, one of the golden rules for Zerg always, always, always is uh, <coughs> mineral lines need to be saturated as soon as possible. And right now, you at six minutes, you have 28 drones. Okay. We're talking 616. You have 28 drones... And both mineral lines are undersaturated, and uh, the third base is it's it's finished now, uh, but it just finished and it has no drones. At this point in the game, no, nothing has happened so far, but I would say you could totally have right now, like 60 drones at least, or like fi like 50 somewhere in the range of like 55 plus drones, and that's assuming okay. you know that you're not even playing perfect. Um. Because, again, nothing has happened, like, literally nothing has happened this game, and, uh, you, your drone scout also, like, here, here's another thing, too. Your drone scout scouted so fast that you saw that he built a bit of a wall, but you didn't actually see that he expanded. So, you know, like, if you would have known, okay, he has an expansion, and I am just, you know, doing, I, again, we're going to teach you a build, but you're doing the build you would have a great economy right now. Like, your third base would be fully saturated, pretty much, and your natural main would be fully saturated. Uh, oh, and, okay. and and then you could be, like, making hydra. It looks like you want to go for hydras, so you could be making hydras and stuff like that. At that point. Gotcha. So, what would you say is your favorite unit comp to go for in ZVP? Uh, in ZVP... I usually go for more of like a uh, hydralisk uh, roach build. Okay. So then I have the front line, and then I have the anti-air in case it goes like sky toss. Sure, uh, it, it works. Um, we, uh, you know, that's so that's what we can focus on is a roach hydra build that'll definitely uh, help you out. Because uh, I feel like I struggle the most against. Um, once Sky Toss gets fully going, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm going to let you in on a secret right now. Uh, with the build that we're going to teach you right now, you could... And I do think you, if you... I'm not going to say you could do it number the first game you do, but if you practice it a little bit, you could be maxed out right now. And gotcha. you could you could just... Like in this, we're, we're talking with Roach Hydra, and you could just like attack across the map and kill him. Uh, so then Sky okay. Toss kind of just gets eliminated all right off the bat. Just due to sheer good mechanics and, uh, you know, macro. Hmm. Okay. Alright, so I'm going to speed it up a little bit faster again. Uh, but, yeah, I, like, oh, the whole game, the, the, like, the things I'm seeing in your mineral lines with, like, inefficiencies, where, it's, like, your natural two gases with two drones on each. You're not, you're also, your mineral line has two drones missing. Your third base, same thing, two out of three on both your gases. And then four drones missing on that mineral line. Like, these are things that you definitely need to... Those are the priorities that you always need to, like, really check up on. And make sure they're they're going efficiently. 
And the main had the same problem too. You had like undersaturated. You had you had an undersaturated main for a very long time, up until the patches started mining out, and now it's a little oversaturated. Uh, these kinds of things are really what needs to be focused on the most. Uh, the rest of your build, like, there are some things about it we could talk about, but um, it's it's not nearly as impactful as the resource management. Like, like as you were saying, that literally was what you said early on in the game. It's very true. Like your lack of queen early on in the game and also lack of set properly saturated mineral lines is definitely fucking you over. Gotcha. I guess when I do remember to put out queens, I usually get it when I feel like I'm get I have a decent economy instead of getting it out so that I have a decent economy, you know? Yeah. yeah. Uh I feel like I'm thinking about it backwards. If you the thing is, here's the thing. If you do a build, like, um, this might enlighten you in how you think about it. If you do a build where, in the beginning of the game, you go for, like, one base, like, 14 spawning pool, kind of like you did. And you also delay the larva like you did. And then you get up to, like, 15 drones, and then now you you take three drones off the middle line because one of them goes to scout across the map, and two of them saturate the gases. Like, they build the gas. And then you rip off another two drones to saturate the gases. Like, if you just constantly put yourself in a undersaturated situation with your minerals... Then you could actually look at your build and go, shit, dude, I don't ever have enough minerals to build queens while I'm trying to spin my larva. Uh, stuff like that. But if you just prioritize the minerals heavily and you maximize what you can get over and over as fast as you can, you're going to have an abundance. And you're never going to, and you're going to, if you don't make queens, you're going to be like, wow, I have like 500 minerals right now. What do I want to do with that? So, okay. just prioritizing, like, because everything you're going to start the game off with in development is very mineral heavy, very gas light. The only time gas priority makes sense early game is if you go for like an all-in where it's like, like, that's why I was asking you, is this like a Ravager all-in or a Roach all-in? Because that is a gas priority. That definitely has a, a merit to be like, okay, I'm going to go one base double gas because you could actually utilize that properly. Otherwise, if yeah. your build is like defensive, droning, expanding, making overlords, drones, queens, hatcheries, overlords, all four of those things are all macro developing aspects of Zerg. And none of them cost gas at all. They're all pure okay. minerals. So, uh, definitely giving yourself the mineral priority then is going to pay dividends for you in the long run. Alright, and then... Uh, get a little bit of everything here. Uh... We could, uh, I could give you the ability as well in a build we could do where you could have the, uh, like the ability to do it like a mutilist transition at some point if you wanted to. Okay. But. I just feel like mutilists are a sound counter to most Protoss. Other uh, than like, of course, stalkers and whatnot. So. I usually build mutilists. I, I, I would say the best way to look at StarCraft is, uh. There are like this is not assuming we're talking we're not talking about macro anymore, okay? We're talking about army compositions. Okay. There are two kinds of units in StarCraft. One unit is a unit that is it's like it like if you had like a scale of difficulty, it's on the easier side of the scale because the unit scales relatively well and it micros itself, more or less. Like you don't need to really utilize it very much. Like it's you're okay sitting back defensively with it, and then you're okay when you do attack with it to literally just a move it and then call it a day. And oh, units yeah. like units like that are literally like a roach or a hydralisk for zerg. Uh, gotcha. Units like a mutalisk or like a zergling, those kinds of units are definitely more uh, focus attention required because those kinds of units they actually scale horribly if you just a move it and don't micro it, and they also scale horribly if you in well, not so much a Zergling for this second part, but a Mutalisk especially for the second part. It scales really bad if you invest into it and do nothing with it. Because a Mutalisk is actually really expensive, and it's surprisingly weak for what it costs. The one advantage of a Mutalisk that is better than most things in StarCraft 2 is that it's very high mobility and it's very versatile because it can attack ground and air. Okay. Like, the Protoss equivalent is a Phoenix... And a Phoenix is a little bit faster than a Muta, and it can totally counter a Muta, but it also can't really do things about buildings. 
It, can, it also has it has limitations to how much it can do against ground. Like, you can't really fly over three meter lines with ten Phoenix and kill all workers. But mutas totally can do that. So, a mutalisk is a unit where it's like, it scales way more. It, like, it's, it's worth more than what it costs the more you micro it. And it's worth less than what it costs the more you just leave it idle and sit there. So and it's then, yeah. Or go ahead. Uh, do you think uh, where I am right now should I even be attempting to like, um, what is it called, um, uh, mess with the enemy like supply line as I'm playing? I can't remember. I honestly with just kind of what we're seeing right here. I think you should not focus on anything for now besides Roach Hydra timings. Um, okay. just because ju like it, it, the thing is is I don't want to like drop like this load of information all at once and be like okay now you need to learn how to do all these micro techniques at the same time learning a build like it's just going to be like holy shit this is overwhelming and this is a bit much i think for yeah. now what you should focus on is you should because i mean like i said before i'm i'm impressed as fuck if you're able to be in diamond and your build is this chaotic if you focus on just getting a build that is solid and then you just do hydro roach timings hydro roach timings you're gonna see like, it's going to open your eyes to a level of efficiency that your build is nowhere even near right now. And then okay. once you kind of get that down where it becomes more or less like muscle memory for you, it's not actually something you have to actively think about. Like, you can subconsciously just do that build, and that's like your efficient opener. Then you can add in aspects once you have that mastered to be like, okay, now let's try doing meter harass and stuff like that. Gotcha. Because I, I see you when you play Zerg... Um, you usually do like a zergling harass, sure. And I've tried that, but usually it just never works for me. Yeah, it's it's because there's uh, there I like this is something a lot of people talk about in StarCraft where they they don't really understand why things do and don't work, and I think a lot of people don't really pay attention to the clock of the game. So something I might be doing might be happening at like six minutes, and something you might be trying to replicate of that might be happening at. 8 minutes and 15 seconds where it's like way later okay. so I think breaking the game down in a really simple way instead of uh, you know making it complicated for yourself is going to make your life right. way easier like literally just going Roach Hydra and, I'm, and there's another huge bad habit that I know I never should have like started is using F2 when I started playing this game and so I've, I've been slowly breaking my habit of that. It's not as bad as you think. Um, F, F, doing F2 to, to do everything is... I'm not going to say it's the most efficient way to play the game at a high level, but you can totally uh -huh. F2 your way all the way to GM if you really wanted to. Uh, gotcha. because, because this game has a micro... Uh, it's not really micro-focused. It's very much macro-focused. And you can win the majority of your games and we're talking like if we're talking anything between platinum and uh, bronze it's like a hundred percent and if it's anything between like diamond and gm it's probably more like like the closer you get to gm it goes down a little bit but we're talking like 80 to 90 percent still of like your games will be focused on macro not so much as about micro like it's gotcha. rare it's rare that you'll be like shit i lost this game because of my micro it's usually because of your macro okay. so the f2 thing is it's minor and then you, you you see what I mean about the minerals? I have eleven thousand. Yeah, I know why that is. I know why that is too. It's because you stared at that fight the whole time. Uh, like if I'm, if I watch your vision and I watch your control grouping, your selection, guaranteed uh -huh. as soon as that fight starts, you select your army and you and you, you do it with F two, which is fine, but you probably never deselect it. So, this is one part where like even if you do F two, if you just do like F two control two, okay. You just make it all control two. What you what you could do during the fight is you could go one S what like for S for select larva, one to select the hatcheries, and then you could just be like hold down H or hold down R or whatever, hold down U for ultralisk because at this point because you have an ultra cavern, uh, okay. and you could be you could do that while the fight's happening because once the fight's happening and you stare at it, if you if you find yourself where your hand doesn't really move anymore. Or if you find yourself doing the same action like 10 times in a row where it's like a click, 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 a click. Like it's not doing anything. You're just literally 
you're honestly wasting time just but you are staring at the fight so you're you're getting a bit of a movie i guess where you're like who's gonna <laughs> win what's happening uh but yeah like it's it's one of those things where you can actually macro without looking at your macro uh just by going one s make a unit and then go back to your army so like i'm watching your army right now it's fully selected units are dying but your army never once leaves the selection throughout this fight Okay. So what you're saying is even when I'm in a battle, if I have, if I look like I'm winning it, or even if I don't look like I'm winning it, make sure I'm building units while I'm in the fight? Yeah. Like, you should build units during dead time in a fight. And I can, what dead time means, or what it is, is let's say, for instance, you say, okay, uh, army, attack that. And then nothing has happened yet that you need to control. You're just, your army is concaving out against his army of his concave. You can still look at it if you want to, to make sure things aren't going to go badly for you. And in case you need to grab your army, you can move it back. But while you're looking at it, you, instead of just looking at it, you can go 1S, make unit. And you can really quickly grab, you know, some larva and make it into something. And then go right back to using your army. And then if, if like, let's say for whatever reason you need to retreat or you want to chase. When you tell your army to, like, move command either backwards or forwards, you'll have a moment where nothing is happening and you're waiting for your army to get to where you want it to go you're waiting for your army to either get on top of him to then kill him or you're waiting for your army to make enough distance to just get away from him like you're just you're waiting on the move command essentially and when that happens you could also do something like you could really quickly um double tap one for instance which would take you back to one of your hatcheries and you could grab your queen and inject it and you could scroll up or down and be like inject 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 uh, if you get really advanced, you could use like camera hotkeys and do this when you're in move command situations where there's nothing happening yet. Although you're you're about to fight, you could take like two seconds or three seconds to do something to uh, to uh, expedite more of your future macro. Like you just invest a second or two to get ready to have more larva in the next thirty seconds to a minute because you might inject your base uh, a little bit. So, like, okay. I, I don't know if you know these things, but I'll just say them just in case. For instance, if you have a queen in your main base, right, like you do, you, what you could actually do is you could hold shift and you could spam injects on this hatchery because you can stack injects in this game. And that would only take, it just, to, just to literally go to your main base, grab your queen, inject, and then, like, literally inject, like, five times. That could take you, like, all of two seconds. And then you could double tap. If your army was on two, you could go, like, two-two. And you, like, you don't have to like, I'm not saying you have to have all these different control groups. You could literally F2, control 2. So you, you could select all army and make it on control 2. So you could, once you inject your main, which takes like, again, like two seconds, you could go 2-2 two, two on your keyboard and it'll, it'll go right back to where your army is. And now you're looking at your army again and you can resume whatever command you left off on, which could be okay. your previous move command and do it now an attack where you're capitalizing on chasing him down or something like that. Gotcha. And then once you attack, you could once again go back to one and go select, make units again. So Yeah, just, I never realized that you could stack injects. I thought it was like the one you had to let it go through. And that's how it used to be back in the day. But you can stack injects now. You can queue them up on every hatchery. And you can do it as many times as you want. Uh, there's the only, the only limiting factor of inject on a hatchery is that the hatchery will start deleting its own larva once you get to about... It's like 18 larva per hatchery, and then every larva after that starts just like deleting itself, and it just dies. So if you if you if another inject pops off, and you already have max larva on the hatchery, every larva that just popped off will just fall to the ground, and it will literally just explode and die, uh, because okay. they don't they don't want you to have like a hundred fucking larva per hatchery, basically. Uh, right. But yeah, you can getting to the point where you have like 18 larva per hatchery though. That does take like three minutes of nothing being spent really. Okay. So it's it it's something that. It's hard to get to that point anyways. Uh, but yeah. Um, that, like... Just respecting the macro a bit more will definitely help you out in the long run. Right. And then I, I feel like on this engagement I should have ran it away. Ran those mutas away when I seen that army come after them. Instead of just sitting there and letting them... For, na for now, I honestly think that you letting them die wasn't the big call here. I think you not spending your money is a big call here. Like, you, you... I don't give a shit if you throw away three times as much resources as your opponent. Because you're actually still being more efficient than him, surprisingly. 
uh, you're ahead by 2,500 minerals here. What you need to do is you need to fix your economy, like the way we talked about earlier, where everything needs to be saturated properly. And you also need to uh, just s make and spend your larva as much as you can because uh, you have, like, so much money and you have a pretty de you have a decent not great but a decent amount of larva to work with as well but you have mm. none of it being used and utilized and and again this is something that needs to not happen when you're not even close to max you need to constantly be trying to make units because you're missing out on automated larva spawning which is 50% of your all your like 50% of all larva is automated spawning from the hatcheries and the other 50% mm. is queen injecting and the fact that you have so much larva just sitting here means 50% you, you, of your larva in, uh, production is just not happening. And then on top of that, if your queens are not injecting, that's the other 50%. So you have effectively 0% production here. If you have capped larva on every hatchery, that's not being utilized. Gotcha. And that's why you're going to have supply problems where it's like, fuck, I'm so much money, but I have no supply. <laughs> it's because you're not okay. getting, you're not utilizing the production at all. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you. I feel like you should. You would have eventually won this game anyways if you just remax. Uh, but okay, what I want to do now is I want to go into a. Uh, I I want to go into a game where I will do a build for you, and we'll, we should talk about it, and I'll give you some ideas on like why things are important, and mm -hmm. you ask any question you have at any point where it's something that like you're not sure about, feel free to ask. It's totally fine. But I think a build order will is 100% what you need. Uh, like okay. some semblance of a build. So then are you saying that um, when I get into a custom match and have me observe you while you're playing kind uh -huh. of thing? Yeah, and then I want you to ask okay. me questions if you have any. So you can okay. just make you can just right-click my name in the top right. And there you go, perfect, yeah. I'll just say make me leader and we're good. Because, uh, like, your build, I just looking at it from my perspective... Uh, I would say your build had more problems than we could talk about. Um, and yeah. it, 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 like all these problems could be answered, though, if I just gave you an efficient build. Okay. Uh, make her free. Protoss. Okay, so this could be your new ZVP build. Okay. And, and then would this also be a counter for uh, cannon rushing? Or is that a whole different subject? Cannon rushing is a little different, yeah. Uh, we, c we can talk about cannon rushing after this. But um, this is what I want you to kind of just make your, your average build. Like, this is what you... If, if you are just going to play a game and you don't expect to do anything that's going to be deviated, like you're not going to all in somebody, this is what I want you to start doing. Just every game. Okay. Like, this will be your opener, basically. And then, once you get to a late stage, you can do whatever you want. But as an opener, this is what you need to do. Like, this this will make your gameplay flow so much better. Okay. Uh, and we're, we're all we're doing is efficiency right here. This is just, like, 100% efficiency. And it's, it's not going to be... I'm not doing any... Like, I'm not doing any tricks, really, where it's like... I'm doing all these crazy things to make it more efficient than, you know, like there's nothing hidden going on here that you don't know about. It's basically, I am just going to maximize my mineral lines and I'm going to take buildings at appropriate times. So okay. first things first is we're going to expand quickly. We're going to go for a natural and this still, I, uh, just, to, just to give you a little bit of elaboration here, if you're paranoid about cannon rushes and being cheesed and this is why you don't like going hatchery first, you could 100% defend a cannon rush going hatchery first, no problem. Uh, okay. And I can show you how that kind of goes. But, uh, yeah. Like, don't don't ever be intimidated to go hatchery first. You should always go hatch first. Uh, especially if you're at a stage where you're, like, learning the game or figuring out a build. So then, can you, like, break down, like, the timing? Because, I mean, I know we're only at a minute, but you're already fully saturated. Yep. And all you got a spawning pool going yep. down. So all I've all I've done so far, all I've done is every single second I have 50 larva, or sorry, 50 minerals, I make a drone. Mm -hmm. I, I do not let it. I, like, I'm literally going 5SD, 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 because my hatchery's on 5 and then SD. So for you, it would be 1SD, 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 1SD. 
You just, like, watch the larva. The second it spawns, it's a fucking drone. It's immediate. Uh, because you don't want to waste time on your mineral line not mining. You, like, you don't want your larva to be sitting there. And for the next, like, 8 seconds or 12 seconds or 15 seconds, you're just not utilizing it. So I'm making drones as fast as possible. That's always priority number one. Number two is I made my hatchery at my natural at 16 supply. At 16 supply? Six, 16 supply was my hatchery. And then I okay. made my spawning pool at 18 supply. Spawning pool. And the reason why these supply numbers make sense is because I'm able to maximize drone, 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 drone. And it doesn't, like, and then, and then suddenly, because I made so many drones, I have more money than I can spend. And then I'm adding all these buildings to it. Pretty much. Uh... Yeah. And now I have, uh, and again, you want to go for roaches, which is totally fine. So we're going to literally skip zergling speed. And we're going to go into a two base roach build to open. I'm making a, and also the second the pool is done, I made both queens immediately. The, the second the pool is done, because it unlocks queen production. Okay. And as, as soon as my queen, and then also the, the gas, I started it at 20. So your build, the way you describe it, is 16 hatch, 18 gas. Or sorry, 16 hatch, 18 pool, 20 gas. So 16, 18, okay. 20 in the order of hatch, pool, gas. And I'm just literally making drones. And now our third queen can just throw down our creep tumor. And we can start another queen. And now at this point too, we can start a, uh, like a roach horn and start like an evo chamber. Okay. So it's not dangerous to put that roach horn up there? It does for you, honestly. At this point, do the, you, I would say do this build in every matchup. If the, if you if you like going Roach Hydra styles, do it every single game. I don't give a shit that it's in the front of your base against Protoss. That kind of that, that kind of stuff will come later. It's that's not your most important thing right now. You should worry about. Okay. Once you get more comfortable with it, though, I would say yeah, you could start putting your your uh, your uh, production buildings like your Roach Horn, your Evo Chamber. Uh, behind your base, like in your, like not in the doorway, because sentries and immortals and stalkers and stuff can abuse that a bit more. But you're not really going to run into people who do that anyways. For a, like people who do it efficiently, is not going to be what's going to be happening to you at all. Uh, okay. Just getting it down and like making it easy for yourself, where it's a pattern you're going to learn for now, is I think you're what you should do. And now we can make like eight roaches. We're going to make eight roaches. We're going to get upgrades of movement speed for roaches and weapons. And this is going to keep us safe versus any type of a timing that could happen to us. Whether it be, you know, like a... Uh, any type of like a gateway random timing that could hit us. We're safe now because we made uh, a handful of roaches here. And we're not going to make we're not gonna make roaches until for the next like four minutes or something because we don't need to really worry about it. And this is something, again, I think you should do in like every one of your games. Uh... Just to get it down. Yeah, literally, this th like this build, just do it every single time, like exactly how we're doing it. Just try to memorize this and just do it, because it's gonna help you so much in the long run about just becoming efficient. And now our third base is done. We took our third when our two bases were fully saturated, so that's uh, like three gases, two bitter lines fully saturated. Start your third base. Okay. And it, all we're doing again is after making the eight roaches. Once our roach run was done. We're just making oh. drones, 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 and then once we get to once we get to three fully saturated mineral lines, which is just about to be right now, take a fourth base, and then take all your gas that are missing. So we can okay. make one new, one new drone right now. Rally it to the mineral line in my main. Make three drones. Rally it to the gas in my main. Make three drones. Rally it to one of the gases in my third. Make three more drones. Rally it to the other gas in my third. Make a hydrogen. You're fucking good. Oh. Okay. Uh, so you can rally eggs as well to to resource production and it makes it to where you don't have to like split it later you can just do it in sets little small sets right away and then now we're going to go back now that we have three bases fully saturated we're going to go back into making roaches and keep in mind i told you you could max out it you could easily have maxed out at nine and a half minutes but you didn't max out last game and you're in your game until 15 minutes right so with this build if you do this build uh, watch, watch how fast we max now, because we're gonna we're gonna max from here. We're just gonna max now. Okay. And we're also it looks like we're gonna get attacked as well, which is fine. Uh, so I can start a second upgrade. We can start. Um, 
you know, keep, just keep, just try your best to keep making overlords periodically. Like, keep your eyes kind of rotating from the top right down to the bottom middle. So what you should be doing is like 5SR, 5SR, 5SH, 5SH. And then look at top right and be like, supply? Yeah, we're still good. And then inject, okay. inject, inject. So like for the supply, when would you say it would be the best to like, is there a certain like two away from maxed out, you throw the overlord out or five or is there you a just, certain you, number you that you would recommend throwing it out there? Do you want to have a cushion of, a, of roughly about eight supply per inject per hatchery? So to, to make that make sense, if you are sitting on eight supply cushion and you injected three bases, you're going to block pretty fast. If you're injecting three bases and you have a 16 supply cushion, you're probably still going to block. But if you have a 24 supply cushion and you injected three bases, you're, you're going to be fine. Okay. So, so just multiply how many hatcheries you're injecting by eight. And then that's how much supply you should try to aim for and always have a cushion of. Okay. So that when you do build out of every one of them, you're not capped in shit. Exactly. Yeah. Because you also, you don't really want to have like 200 supply and you're at like 90 currently. Uh, so you're just making like 12 overlords at a time or some shit, but but yeah, look at the, look at the look at the time of the clock. We maxed out at 8:08. We maxed out about in half, almost half the time that your game maxed out at. So this if you, is making me feel like such a noob. No, it, it, it's, it's totally fine. Like it's just inefficient is all it was. If you just do this build, guaranteed, you're gonna have so much more success in your games. Because it seems like I'd have a lot more fun too. Yeah, well you're gonna you're gonna win a lot more for sure. Because your build, that's why I was saying, your build had so many problems that, like, I think this is going to answer a, a lot of them indirectly if we just give you a build that's efficient. Because your build was so tech and gas heavy and so economy light that it it just puts you in, like, a really bad spot without even nothing, with nothing even happening yet. Okay. And, like, at this point, when we're attacking him, what you should be doing is you should be going inject, inject, inject. Creep spread, creep spread, creep spread. You should be injecting and creeping right now, not staring at your army. And you should be looking okay. at your base to be like, like, see how the main base right now is 16 out of 8? You should be fixing yeah. things like this to be like, alright, go down to my fourth base. Start a fifth base. Look at the natural. Two over, go down to the fourth base. Look at the third base, we're good. Like, maximizing your income all the time so that you can just constantly keep pumping this kind of an army over and over and over. So your first max is not your only max. You have remaxes. And stuff like that. Okay. All right. So that makes sense. Your next game uh, that you wanted to go over was it, was it a cannon rush that you got killed in? Um, I think I have that one. Yeah. Or or if you'd like, we could go over a cannon rush where I could have somebody cannon rush me and I can show you a proper defense. Okay, that's fine with me. Yeah. Okay. Yo, ch uh, stream. Is, if anybody wants to cannon rush me right now, I don't give a shit what league you're in. Um, uh, pref okay, Dr. Ryan wants to cannon rush me. D let's do it, dude. Let's go with it. That Doc was like instant. <laughs> yeah, Dr. Ryan's like GM, so that's all good. Yeah, that's uh, it. But yeah, uh, basically, if you get cannon rushed, I'll show you what to look for and what like what makes sense and how to like read it. Oh, okay, yeah, we're getting cannon rushed without having the drone scout. Okay. Alright, so I'm going to make a game really fast. Also, chat. What up, guys? So we are doing a coaching lesson right now. I hope you guys are all having a good day. Uh, While he's joining, I'm going to run and grab something to drink. Over right. Right Sounds good, dude. But yeah, I hope you guys are having a good day. Ryan, thank you so much for uh, helping me, dude. What kind of cannabis do you want? Uh... uh I'm trying to think about what kind of cannon rush you would find in diamond, honestly. Uh, you know, uh, Dr. Ryan, just, just honestly, just do like, pretend like you're going to cannon rush me and then go into like fucking Stargate or something. Because I really don't think a cannon rusher in diamond is going to do like stalker or immortal cannon rushes. Like it's less common. You know what I mean? But yo, chat, what up, guys? Um... Uh. Yeah, uh, I overheard you before my mic cut out. When I when I get cannon rush, it's never units with it. It's just a crap ton of cannons. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, they're ha they're always hanging off the edge of uh, the main natural line right there. That ramp. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that sounds perfect. That's what we're kind of kind of go into. 
So far, what I've learned is make the roach. That's exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so I'm going to have him just cannon rush me with, like, you know, I, uh, Ryan, just cannon rush however you think is best to just do mass cannons. And then um, it would be like uh, the concept where you would, you know, be like, oh, I'm going to expand, take a nexus behind that, and go into a Stargate. We don't have to play the whole game out. Uh, we, we can if it ends up happening, but uh, I really just want to show efficiency on like how to hold cannons. And for this one, to make it really easy too, we're not going to pull drones either. So pulling drones is like, you don't need to pull drones as Zerg, and pulling drones is something that requires a lot of knowing what the fuck you're doing. Honestly, like, and if you don't, if you don't really know the ins and outs of cannon rush, pulling drones is going to do nothing but like make you fall behind. Okay. But ravager, I'm, I'm gonna. What I'm gonna do for you this game is I'm gonna do ravager, and ravager is definitely just like easier to uh, understand. Yeah, like I was playing, and I had this one guy take pity on me because he cannon rush me. And he's like, "Are you even building rap? <laughs> like, he took yeah. Pity. <laughs> I was like, "Wow." <laughs> No, it's, it's all good. This is a uh, this this will look good. So first overlord goes to scout his base always right away. Second over second overlord stays at your natural, and we're still expanding. So I'm I'm not like hard countering a cannon rush right now. This is like we're we're again doing the standard build I just told you to do as an opener. I'm gonna go 16 hatch, 18 pool, 20 gas. Okay. And we can see a probe. If a probe comes in your base, this is why the second overlord's important. You can see this shit now. You don't have to have a drone uh, over here to figure this out. And don't, do not freak out from the first pylon like this. You don't know if he's going to commit to it or not. So don't like just cancel the hatchery immediately. Okay. Just wait on it. And he lets it finish. And now he builds a cannon. Now you cancel the hatchery because you're like, okay, yep, it's okay. it's legit. It's a cannon rush. So now, as soon Did as you, you see need this, the minerals back now. Yeah, and uh, now as, as soon as you see that, build double gas in your main, run the drone away. Literally, just run across the map. Who gives it? Just run away from it. Build a new hatchery somewhere else. Okay, and okay. then just forget about the hatchery for a while. Just don't even look at it. Uh, and now at our main base, we're still at every single time a larva is up. Drone, 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 drone. Saturate our gases. And now make a roach run. Like right away when the pool's done and make a queen too. And now we're going to make one final drone because what we want to do is we want our first larva to spawn when the roach warren is now in production. Because, okay. and then we're going to, and then we're going to make an overlord with that. Because what happens is, is the roach warren has a 39 second build time. And if we talk about how much larva can spawn in, in the time of that, we talked about one larva per 10 seconds. So 39 seconds is practically four larva. And three larva is the cap on a hatchery. So if we make an overlord first, it gives us a fly cushion. And it'll allow us to have three larvae stacked up to now be ready to defend a cannon rush. Because the second the roach one's done, we should have three larvae sitting there ready to go. Okay. So now three larvae just hit the hatchery. Roach one just finished. Three roaches immediately. And now we can go into um, an overlord again as soon as the next larva spawns because we'll need it to not supply block. Roaches are about to spawn, so you could do something like this too, where you could take a drone. This is a little advanced, but you could be like, make a, make a spore crawler, make three ravagers, cancel the spore crawler. Actually, the, ha the natural just finished. You don't, even, you don't even need to do that. Fuck it. You don't even need to do that. Just. <laughs> I, was, I was being a little bit more fancy there. You don't even do that at all. <laughs> and he, he just did a cannon rush, and he just stopped. He actually just went into full macro mode. So now what do we do? We're going to go macro mode too. Oh, we just made three ravagers, and we called it a day. Three ravagers is literally all you need to defend cannon rush. So okay. he, he just didn't really commit to it. He just went kind of more into, I'm going to go, you know, economy so style. So if, if I ping on here, can you see it? I, I cannot. Wanna... I cannot because you're a spectator. What do you what do you want, want to look at? Um. So when the dude kind of rushed me, you see where the two minerals are right below the ramp? Yeah, yeah. On the cliff side. Yeah. Uh -huh. He put his pylons down there. He put one and then two to kind of block it semi. Okay. And then he started placing, he placed a cannon behind that and then two up top. So that, again, three Ravagers. Here's the thing about Ravagers. Is, do you see how I'm killing this cannon at his base right now? You can kill it out of range. Okay. So you don't actually have to attack the cannon at all. You will, over time, kill the cannons in, like again and again and again and again. Because Ravagers just outrange everything. Okay. And now his cannon's going to die. 
and our Ravagers only are taking damage because he has an Oracle and a Stalker here, not because of the cannon. It did, the cannon didn't shoot a single time. Right. So if your opponent is the kind of guy that's going to make 20 fucking cannons or something in your base, uh, that's great for you because, um, you know, that's all he's doing is putting himself further and further and further and further behind. Okay, so it's more that one of those things where you keep building your economy while you're knocking down his... Uh, yeah, that's perfect, exactly. That's what I want you to do, is I want you to build drones. Once you build three Ravagers, I want you to just build drones. And just literally make an economy while uh, your opponent is... St if, if, he, if he's the kind of guy that's like, I'm just going to make mass cannons and I'm never stopping. I'm just going to make <laughs> like 15 cannons at your base. That's just it, it. It's tedious a little bit for you to have to like periodically kill all of them, but you will kill all of them with without having to build thirty roaches or twenty roaches, because you should lose zero units if you're using ravagers. Okay. And then from here, you know, this game is a bit more advanced now. This is, uh, at this point, you could just go back into the roach build. I would say like roach hydra, and we've okay. tried to kind of maximize our economy here a little bit. We didn't do the gas perfectly, but. Uh, it, it, it doesn't really matter. At this, this point, I feel like most of your games won't even look like this, honestly. Most games will look like the kind of guy that you're talking about, where it's like, instead of building one cannon and a pylon, it's the kind of guy who builds like eight cannons and like three pylons or some shit. And he just literally tries to leapfrog cannons all over your base. Yeah. And that guy will get completely shut down by ra three Ravagers. Is that what you'd call a, a turret all-in? Or pylon all pylon rush all-in kind of thing? Uh, like what the, they're the, just focusing completely on their turns and they're not focusing on their macro. It's 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 just an all in, yeah. It's like the kind of guy who just is he like he is the sole um, definition of what all in is because if he's gonna keep cannoning you and keep cannoning you and you already have a counter to the cannons, he uh -huh. is digging himself a deeper and deeper hole uh, that he's just never gonna come out of if you don't throw your ravagers away. Gotcha. And then from here, you know, we could we have a good economy. Again, we we always this is the big thing I want you to always really understand, is we always prioritize the economy. We don't prioritize the uh, you know the tech really hard. I didn't just rush to a layer um, on like 18 drones, and when I'm getting cannon rush, I'd be like, let's make hydras now. I made like 45 drones or so, and then we like took our layer. So we always spent our larva first. Larva's always the priority. It's always the priority. Right. And uh, now th that's for some reason that's always been a thing for me. Like I've always tried to rush my lair tech up really fast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. So yeah. Uh, anyways, yeah. It's uh. Mineral field exhausted. All right, so I'm gonna do one more. I I, I want to give more of an example of like what you what you're talking about, where you're like the guy just keeps making cannons <laughs> all day. Yeah. <laughs> it gets so annoying, and I have like the worst temper. <laughs> sure, sure. So sure. I just. I just sit there, cannon after cannon, and I'm like, okay, now you're getting on my nerves. <laughs> like, <laughs> okay. But that's a personal problem. No, I don't think that's something you can coach me on. <laughs> no, it's all good. I do anger management classes as well. Don't worry. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I'm, I'm just kidding. Mm -hmm. All right, he wants nightshade. Okay, so uh, this time I'm gonna have him literally just make cannons, never-ending cannons, just constant cannons. Okay, and then uh, yeah, and then I'm just I, all I'm gonna make this game is seriously three ravagers, just three. What the hell, man? Yo, Raugu, what's up, dude? Also, thank you for the sub earlier. I uh, I appreciate your tier three 18 months, man. Sorry, I'm, I am in a coaching lesson, so I'm focusing on this a bit more. But much love, dude. I do appreciate you. Uh, but yeah, this this one will just kind of show you the power of like what three ravagers can do, and then just droning behind it. It's uh. When your opponent is like the guy who just never stops. Okay. Oops. So again, we're sending our overlord to like the middle or the tip of his ramp going down to his natural. 
Uh, second Overlord goes directly in front of my natural. And we can we give it, we rallied the egg as well uh, from our hatchery. So I don't even have to think about it anymore. I just did all the things that need to be done within the first like 15 to 20 seconds of the game. Oh, yeah. Okay. And now all I'm doing is 5ST, 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 5ST. So I can make I can maximize my larva like as fast as I can. Gotcha. Yo, Toasty, thank you very much for the or I mean Machine Mallard, thank you very much, dude, for the uh the gifted sub, dude. Much love. Much love. Alright, and then we're gonna expand. Again, same build. Uh I'm not changing the build again, it's still 16, 18, 20 for like a roach opener. Overlord's chilling in front of our natural so we can see if the probe arrives. And we can see a probe right now with our first Overlord that just passed. So we're gonna make a pool now at 18. Um. Then we can follow the probe, just to be sure. What's going on? Like, just make sure we're not, we're not like leaving fog spots wherever the probe goes. And now we gotcha. see him taking a left, so now, oh, there's a pylon. Still, don't cancel the hatchery yet. Start, uh, we can start one gas just because it's it's at this point now. We're at 16, 18, 20. We're still doing the build order. We haven't responded to what he's doing yet. Oh, second pylon? Okay, that's more likely a cannon rush. We're not pulling drones. If that pylon finishes and he builds a cannon, we're going to cancel the hatchery. Cancel the hatchery. Now move the overlord as well out of harm's way. Go take this base. Just take, take a different base somewhere else. Take double gas now and do the same exact thing we talked about. Uh, a second ago, where we can, uh, we're still making drones up until the roach warrens, or up until the spawning pool's done. We start a roach warren, we start a queen, and now as soon as we start the roach warren, we build an overlord to uh, give ourselves a supply cushion to make ravagers with. And we want, we we know that the roach warren has four larvae that's going to build it. So if we spend one of those things on an overlord, we can, um, you know, have three larvae right as we also have the roach warren done. Okay. Okay, and now we're going to... We actually have a little bit more time. We're going to make a, another egg into a larva. And now, Roach one should be finishing with our third larva finishing too at the same time. So third larva is finishing right now. Right as the Roach one finished. That's the, always the goal you want to go for. Yeah, and how he's building his... It looks exactly how... Sure. Um, I usually get... <laughs> yeah. So we can make like a creep tumor over here or something, just to give us more room to work with. Make three okay. ravagers out of our roaches. And then we'll go back into making drones now. Just just because that we're gonna focus on trying to economy up while making ravager defense. Okay. And then you sent that other other, that drone that you canceled the hatchery and made the hatchery over here. And yep, and now I'm making drones out of there too. Okay. And we can start injecting this hatchery here again. Okay, so we made immortals. Um, I would say this is a little advanced. I saw the I saw the robo. God damn it, Ryan. <laughs> All right, but yeah, it, three Ravagers though. If we're making drones versus somebody who is just cannoning, just a cannon, uh, oh. this is going to uh, definitely be, you know, good against cannons. I, uh, how often would you say you get proxy immortal with Prism Micro? Just out of curiosity. Uh, never. never. Okay, that's what I thought. So yeah, what's happening right now is a little. Uh, it's a little. Um, <laughs> Not super great example, I guess, <laughs> because this, he's a GM, uh, so he's kind of kind of doing a higher level cannon rush here. But yeah, uh, yeah, no, just in general, like these three roaches. If you make drones behind it, you will just be able to. If you get rid of the cannon rush entirely, you'll be able to uh, transfer your drones, and you could even take like, let's see how my base over here is just making drones. I could even be like this, take another ba base like over here to the right, and eventually I could just transfer my drones again and again and again. And you will you you will kill cannons faster than they can build with ravagers. It will just it will happen that way. Uh, yeah, he proxy immortal to me though, so he didn't do a full cannon rush build. All right, GG. Yo, Ryan, thanks for playing, man. GG. Uh, but yeah, that's again. If we're gonna talk about 
proxy immortals that's uh definitely something i would say is more like a gm or like a master's coaching lesson it's, yeah i don't uh, think i've ever seen that one yeah it's higher level it's higher level protoss build right there uh the way the way just to throw it out there that you would deal with that that you would uh handle a proxy immortal is you would re you would scout with your overlord and realize okay yeah he's making a proxy robo facility and you would just make you would constantly produce roaches out of your main and you you could go up to like seven or eight ravagers in your main and you would have to micro queen ravager in your main base while you could just like make drones outside uh at your um your proxy base okay but yeah i would not worry about that right now just just know that three ravagers as long as you cast gross of bile on the edge of a photon cannon uh that is, uh, you're, you're able to outrange it, and the cannon cannot shoot back at you. So you can kill infinity cannons with three Ravagers. And it takes, gotcha. the reason why three Ravagers is really good too, is because it's it's not that expensive to go up to just three, so that you can make drones again faster. But it takes six corrosive biles, or sorry, it takes five corrosive biles to kill a cannon. So if you have six, six corrosive biles going on it because you have three Ravagers, well, 3 plus 3 is 6. If you only had 2 Ravagers, you'd have to wait for 3 rounds of Corrosive Bile. So 3 Ravagers is that sweet spot where you only have to have 2 rounds of Corrosive Bile. And even if you miss a little bit of a window where it's like, shit, I didn't maximize my Corrosive Bile as fast as I could. Maybe I waited 5 seconds longer than I needed to and there was a little bit of regen that happened on the shields of that cannon. You'll still kill it. Because you're, it's a bit of overkill with the 6th Bile. Is that, does that make sense? Like, it's just... Yeah, yeah okay. Alright, good. Uh, but yeah, three Ravagers is great at dealing with Cannon Rush. And then you can just literally just, just drone behind it. And then once you drone behind it, you can go back into Roach Hydra once you have a nice drone count. Gotcha. And the last thing I'll say is, do you know how to check your worker count uh, in top right? Do you know how that works? No. Okay, so if you mouse over your supply in top right of the screen, uh, like literally just mouse over the supply number, it'll tell you how many army units you have and how much drones you have. And ideally, what you want to go for, if you're getting cannon rushed and you see that it's just cannons, try your best to get to like, we're talking like 45 drones or so, 50 drones. And then you can like make uh, kind of how we did it in the game I showed you, the, the example game. You can make like eight more roaches just to be extra safe to make sure you don't die. And then you can go back into drones up until about 66. And again, you can mouse over that so you can see how many drones you're at. And then once you're at like 66 drones, you could just go max. You could just max out. Just do okay. three base maxes. That that could be what you do for now. Gotcha. Cause and then I uh, I just checked my uh, like oh, ZBZ, yeah. uh, DVT, all those uh, the matchups, and it seems like I've won one out of like the eight games that I played against Terran. Sure. I don't know why, but I can't. I win I, it. Oh, I can tell you why, dude. It's because your first game that you showed me. That's probably why. Uh, your build is just so inefficient. Uh, do the exact, like, say, like, really save that replay that I, not the one we just played just now. You don't have to save that, really. Uh, but the, the one example game I gave you of the, the overall build, how it maxes out, do that build against Protoss, Zerg, and Terran, all three races, and see how it goes for you. I, and then, uh, the only, the only difference is, is against Zerg, put a second Evo Chamber instead of just the one. Even though you don't need to use the second Evo Chamber, it'll just, it'll just act as like a pseudo wall where like a queen can stand in the doorway and you're safe against Speedling All-Ins. Or a lot safer against that. But against Terran and Protoss, you can do the exact same build. For now. And I guarantee you'll have a lot of success with it. Okay. Because uh, your biggest problem is you're just inefficiently getting to max like really late. And if you hit max like five minutes faster or like eight minutes faster, you would be like, wow, I have 200 supply and my opponent only has... 102, or I'm just like crushing them. Okay. But, anyways, dude, do you have any any questions about anything we talked about? Anything not make sense that you want to talk about? Um. No, honestly, it, it really made it it made sense to me. <coughs> it's okay. just the um. Oh, I more had another yeah. question for sure. like other like. It's not even to do with coaching right now. It's more to like, um, if girl. I, uh, if I did. <laughs> I was Sorry. gonna say you have girl problems. I'm just joking, dude. No, no. no. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Um, but it's it's more like if I went to your Patreon and did the uh, 75 thing for the coaching, would sure. that be every, a certain day every month? 
it's it, we we would just talk. I'm definitely we, thinking about doing that. Yeah, if you want to, we would just talk every month, and um, we I already have one guy who does that, and he just emails me once like you know once in a while and like sometime within the month, and he's like, hey, would you be free uh, next week sometime, and then we schedule it. Uh, so you just basically get access to a coaching lesson every month, and we'll schedule it. Uh, it's there's no risk like you know definite restrictions where it's like it has to be this one day every time it could be any day okay. it's just any day we're available basically gotcha but yeah man uh anything else you want to know or are you uh he's feeling good um i would like to know a build for rushing though because i do like to tinker around and then if any way you could like send me like i okay i got a build for you timing for the, uh, the first one like here's on an email or something this is your build so dude just uh just use that replay and just literally copy that replay okay everything about that replay but okay. the old the difference in way if you're going to be aggressive or if you're going to be macro is when i build eight roaches that's when we're at three gases two base mineral line saturated all right and i have a third okay. base you everything up to that point you will copy it exactly the same whether you're going to be aggressive or whether you're going to be macro related but if you want to be aggressive, just never stop building roaches. Don't stop at okay. eight roaches or ten roaches. Just literally roach, roach, roach. Or just keep going until you just kill your opponent. That could be your timing build because it's still going to hit really fast. And it's going to be, for the games you're going to be playing, you're going to have these windows where it's like you're going to be attacking with 120 supply and your opponent's going to have 54. Literally. I'm not even kidding. Like, that's what it's going to look like if you do it right. Okay. Uh, so the build is... Uh, 16 hatch, 18 pool, 20 gas, and then you just literally, as soon as your queen, as soon as your pool's done, you make queens. Never try to never supply block, and you're just making drones, 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 drones. You don't stop making drones until you're three, uh, three gases fully saturated and two mineral lines fully saturated, and you don't take gases two and three until your two mineral lines are fully saturated. So the first gas is at 20, the second and third gas don't happen until that's the last thing you build for drones. It's when you're already 16 out of 16 on both mineral lines, and then okay. your your roach warren and your uh, your roach warren and your evo chamber start around the same time you start your layer, and your layer starts once you can afford it when you have no larva sitting there. So that that like that's not always the same number. It kind of changes based on how efficient you're being, because if you're missing your larva, that number is going to change a little bit. But if you're really cranking it out really fast, because you're maximizing your larva really well. As you're doing the 5SD, 5SD, 5SD uh, thing we talked about, you'll definitely hit that layer timing faster. Okay. And then it's just, once you start making roaches, once you're fully saturated, two mineral line, three gas, it's just roaches and overlords, roaches and overlords, roaches and overlords, off of three hatcheries, even though you're only saturated on two bases. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, and also... And then for are, the... Yeah. Oh, my bad. You're all good. For the hatcheries, you put it on five. I usually put mine on one. Does that matter? No. I start switching. Preference. Five. That's all preference. Whatever feels okay. comfortable to you. For me, I've uh, every time I played RTS, I always put army uh, that I micro on one, two, three, four, uh, and I put production on five. So okay. production for me is uh, like I did this in Warcraft two. I did this in Warcraft three. I did it in Brood War. I did it in all previous RTSs. So that's just my habit. Gotcha. All right, man. Well, I will put this. I will upload this. I will put it on YouTube. Uh, I will also post to you in Discord probably tomorrow the link to go watch it. So you can always go back and rewatch it again and again if there's anything you want to recap on. Okay. And, dude, thank you for doing a coaching lesson, man. Oh, thank you for having me. It's been eye-opening. <laughs> <laughs> nice, dude. Honestly. All right. I will, uh, I will talk to you again in the future, and uh, good luck to you, man. Okay, sir. Thank you. All right. See you, dude. You can upload the replay yep. to the website spawning tool and it will write out everything I've built. Hold on, Wookie Master. I appreciate you with the bits. I'm going to do a little bit of an outro and then we'll talk about that. Um, but yeah. Uh, my student, if you are in the chat, uh, you can do that, what he just said to you as well. Uh, you can upload it and then uh, make it easy. Or, you, I mean, you have the replay, so you can do whatever you want with it, but much love guys thank you for watching uh, another coaching lesson i hope you guys learned something i hope you enjoyed it uh this lesson has definitely been about uh just the focus of a proper build and efficiency of doing that 
the build itself does not have to be perfect, but efficiency kind of needs to be there. And there was definitely a lot of inefficiencies. Uh, the most common inefficient way to play StarCraft is definitely to do gas-focused things without gas-focused oh, builds. Yeah. Gas-focused builds are all-ins, and if you're not doing it all-in and you're focusing heavily on gas, it, the build doesn't make sense. It just puts you behind. Uh, anyways, though, thank you for watching, guys. I will see you in another one. Um, go check out more if you're if you're interested. Also, you can check out a Bronze GM series if you're really looking for a lot of Stark information, like a, basically a guide of how to get through each league. But thank you for watching again. See you in the next one. Peace, guys.